Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Flex and Reflex Sunday Sit Down. If this is the first episode you're joining, what I do once a week is I sit down and I answer all the questions that have been sent in from around the world, asked by my clients, and so forth. And I answer them every Sunday. So here we go. Uh, can you share an instance where you didn't meet your fitness goals and what you learned from that experience? So I like to think about uh, what I wished I had have done when I first started training back in 1988. The only metric I have is my my body weight. I would have loved to do what I do for my clients now, which is do all the measurements, do a strength testing, fitness assessment, all that kind of stuff, as well as had DEXA scans. And if I had have known what I know now, I would have had a DEXA scan probably once a year uh, since I started training. So I can see what's happening to my body composition, where, how much muscle have I got, how much muscle am I losing, et cetera, et cetera. And so the lesson that I had was back in uh, 2020, I'm keeping an eye on my cat at the same time. I think he's seen a bird. Um, uh, just before COVID started, I determined that that was the year that I was going to train as hard as I could, get a strength and conditioning coach to help me get that six pack and just do things in a way that I hadn't done before and completely focused. Then COVID hit, I was still very focused and did really, really well though. And I uh, achieved the best look that I'd ever achieved. And I had a DEXA scan at the end of that. I had three over the, the duration. And at the end of it, I'd put on something like 1.9 kilos of muscle over that time. I was just like, wow, that's pretty good. Um, but like I train naturally and um, like no steroids or anything like that. So uh, it, it's really hard. And obviously I'm older, so it's really hard to do that. So I thought, all right, I'm going to do it again for 2021. And I did that, achieved a better look. And at the end of the the year of training, where well, like uh, I I trained harder. I was lifting bigger weights. I had a much better look. And so I'm thinking to myself that I reckon I've put on a kilo and a half, but secretly I was hoping for two kilos. And like I'd got two, uh, 1.9 last year. It's got to be two this year because I've just been so much more focused and, and everything. Anyway, so they did the test and it came back and showed that I'd lost 900 grams of muscle. And I was devastated. And like in the minutes after afterwards i'm in the car and i'm thinking oh what you know all that work what was the point i sacrificed so much i pushed so hard i was so focused and i lost 900 grams so then in the subsequent weeks i, I was pulling it apart with my strength and conditioning coach and this is the big lesson that i had was he was talking about the role that stress plays in your life. And so just think about this for a second. 2020, before COVID, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. We were locked down more than anyone else across six lockdowns over 300 days, I think it was. And it was just it was just nuts. The uncertainty in my business, the uncertainty when things were going to get back to normal, homeschooling, my daughter was dealing with her terminal illness, and that went into 2021, and things just got worse and worse in terms of, uh, you know, the, the uncertainty and also uh, with my my daughter for being unwell and then her subsequently losing her life uh, post my body transformation. But um, what he was saying is it's that stress that sits within you, even though you may not feel stressed, it's the stress that your body is going through and that had such a dramatic impact in uh, my body uh, not recovering enough between workouts to allow to take up the protein not getting quality enough quality deep sleep to for uh, you know everything to repair and um, so it was a really really interesting experience which leads into the next the question around sleep but it, it really made me understand uh, just how my body is impacted by stress because I'm very calm all the time but the internal dialogue sometimes like a, what keeps you awake at night and you're lying there in bed and you're thinking about all these different things and for me that clearly has an impact on me so that was my major my major lesson there I, I was I was devastated that's for sure <laughs> okay how has prioritizing sleep affected your fitness routine and overall wellness so like I just said there uh, with my transformation there one of the the things that you need to understand is with your sleep it's one of the only ways that so stress causes inflammation in the body right and so one of the only ways to get rid of that is through your deep sleep through quality sleep and so like i wear um one of these things 
uh, an Apple Watch to uh, give me data. And now I don't wear it all the time, but I wore it for oh, probably about a month uh, to get uh, some quality uh, sleep data. So I could see, well, am I am I sleeping really well? How much deep sleep am I getting, et cetera, et cetera. And so what my strength and conditioning coach uh, explained to me was it's the amount of deep sleep we get before midnight that's super, super important for reducing the stress, getting out the inflammation and that kind of stuff. Now, for probably a decade, I've been surviving on around six hours of sleep. I was fine that I could function really well on that and still get a lot done. And I'd put a lot of pressure on myself to, uh, to just have really long days and just be focused. And what I realized is uh, over time, I'm looking at the data, and as I'm getting older, it takes me longer to recover from like workouts. And I find now that when I have around seven hours sleep or a little bit more, I feel so much clearer and I perform so much better through the day. Now, the challenge is most of the time I'm getting probably six, six and a half hours sleep. And there's maybe one day a week where I get seven hours, but I know that that's where I perform better. So, what I try and do to help get more to the and is go to bed a little bit earlier. So like by 9.30, 9, 9 9.30 to try and fall asleep by no later than 10 uh, to get a couple of hours quality deep sleep before midnight. And uh, then, you know, I'm getting up at five or six or something, which was some, my goal is around that seven hours of sleep. And that's where I perform a lot better. Uh, so if I have less than that, I get fatigued. I find my focus isn't there. My work ethic isn't there. And um, the effort that I can put into my workouts is also not there. So it's, um, it's, it's super critical. You cannot shortcut it. You cannot shortcut it. You've got to do it. All right, next question. Uh, can you discuss how cultural influences shape our fitness and dietary habits and how can we adopt the best practices from around the world? So one of the things that I, I think it doesn't uh, matter uh, what sex you are, it doesn't matter what, uh, what country you come from, uh, culturally, it really doesn't matter. The principle is uh, strength training will benefit everybody. Yes, there are different genetics across different cultures, et cetera, and different races, but you will still benefit from doing those things. Where I see the, you know, you'll hear people talk about the the Mediterranean diet and, and uh, you know, the like the the way certain uh, cultures live in, I think it's Okinawa in uh, Japan. And uh, you look at the, uh, if you break down a lot of those diets, what are they? They have quality protein, they have good quality plant-based food, and they will have some high energy carbohydrates in there as well. There are other factors as well that influence that we're around community, around activity, uh, around what they're doing with their mindset and that kind of stuff as well. So there's a whole, it, it, you can't just single out one thing. It's a whole combination of lifestyle factors that are affected. But one of the things that I find with um, um, certain cultures with in clients that I work with, if you, if you pull apart their nutrition, it's not particularly healthy. So it can be high in fat, it can be low in plant-based food, not quality protein, and a lot of high energy carbohydrates. So rice, bread, um, you know, pasta, that kind of stuff. And people tend to eat more of that, less of the plant-based food, less of the clean proteins, et cetera. And uh, if it's too high in fat as well, then it just blows the calorie profile out. So it makes it really, really challenging. And so what I aim to, to do is make sure that it doesn't matter what culture they come from, is to look at what are they eating, what are their favorite dishes, and give them tips as to, well, how do you reduce the fat in it? How do you get more protein in? How do you get more plant-based food in, uh, like your your leafy green vegetables and that kind of stuff? So anything that's not like a potato or uh, you know that kind of stuff, which is your high-energy carbs. And then for the high-energy carbs, making sure that people are having controlled portions of those. Um, and that's that's kind of the you know the toughest thing I think. And so just generally speaking, strength training, getting more plant-based food into your daily eating and clean protein is the biggest problem that I find around the globe, irrespective of culture. And uh, with the busier lifestyles that people are having, they're eating uh, more and more dine out food, which is high calorie, less nutritional dense density, high sugar, high fat, high calorie, and like the daily profiles just, just blowing out. So we can, you know, do it a little uh, uh, you know, a lot better, a lot cleaner. Uh, next question. 
how do you incorporate mindfulness into your fitness routine and what benefits have you noticed? Well, one of the things that I like to teach people in their strength training is you put your mind into the muscle. So yes, before I get to the workout, I am thinking about, so take this morning, for instance, I did a workout first thing, got up, got dressed, did a workout. I'm lying in bed thinking about my workout and processing why am I doing it, connecting back to my goals. How, what are my goals for today's workout? You know, what's my specific workout? What goals do I want to achieve for each lift that, that I'm doing? And so I do that. And then when I'm actually in the gym doing the exercise and I'm warmed up, I'm putting my mind into the muscle. So today I trained legs. So what that means is, so I was doing leg press. And so, so as the weight's coming down, I'm thinking about pushing back up through my heel. I'm thinking about my quads. I'm thinking about my hamstrings. I'm thinking about my glute muscles as I'm pushing through. So you see a lot of a lot of people, they'll just be in the gym and just going through the motion, say like a bicep curl and just even this sort of tempo. And it's like, you're not thinking about this. You're just doing the motion. And some people are like side on, they're getting this swinging motion happening. You're swinging your arms. Um, so I say, think about the muscle that you're working. So in the bicep curl, so, so this is the muscle we're doing. So I'm like, I'm thinking about here, I'm forgetting about all of this, that like this is holding on to the weight. I'm forgetting about all of that. I'm thinking about here. And as it's coming up, I'm just thinking that's doing all the work. And as it's coming down, I'm just thinking all about that. And when you do that, you find that you get way more out of your workouts. In terms of like other things, in terms of mindfulness, so I'm not in the gym, that we tend to think of, I guess, mindfulness as like, you know, like at peace and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not doing that in the gym. I'm focused in the gym and I'm switched on. For me, the mindfulness, so like today, for instance, a beautiful day. It's not a cloud in the sky. It's Mother's Day. It's a glorious day. It's going to be about 20 degrees. Happy Mother's Day, all the mums out there. Uh for me, it could be like sitting out here and just enjoying nature, listening to the birds, looking at the garden, that kind of stuff. Might be going for a walk uh, or just enjoying nature uh, around me. To me, that's kind of mindfulness. And and what that does, it I mentioned about stress before, it's kind of like it's just all drifting out of me. Any stress that you've got, it gives your mind uh, an opportunity to just uh, free up and it's like I talk about filling up your bucket. We have this bucket of energy and everything that we are giving out to people all day, every day. If your bucket is empty, then you've got nothing left to give. And I find doing those things I just said helps fill the bucket back up a little bit so you've got more to give. And because each day you're tipping your bucket out, if you don't fill it back up, it's like there's 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 nothing left uh, to give there. So, yeah. So uh, that is my my. Um, thought on it. I will go through three more questions. Uh, what advice would you give to someone entering their 50s to maintain or even improve their fitness levels? Okay. So I just had a conversation just a few minutes ago with somebody. When it comes to your health, wellness, fitness, say people come to to see me and they I talk about strength training, their food, cardio, et cetera. And sometimes people say, how long do I have to keep doing this? Well, the answer to that's simple for the rest of your life. Okay, you have to do it for the rest of your life. If you want to be the best version of you physically, health-wise, mentally, and you're building that success, you need to put your health as your number one priority in these things that I teach people. You do it for the rest of your life, for the rest of your life. There's just no exception. And so if you're if you're entering your 50s, so like I turned 56 in August, um, I would suggest that, honestly, it doesn't matter what you've been doing up to this point, whether you're as focused as me or you're just starting out, you think, oh, I better do something. You've got to double down on what it is that you're doing. So you've got to be more focused. So that means making sure for me that I'm really focused on making sure I get a lot of nutrient dense food to feed the brain, to help repair the muscle tissue. Like uh, the older you get, the ability to build more muscle diminishes all the time. So I do the strength training to hang on to what I've got and add a, a little bit more uh, as well. And, um, uh, you know, making sure that I'm having all my, like my regular blood tests and all the different medical things so that I know that if there is something wrong, then it's going to be picked up early. So then we can, we can address it. But most of the health issues that people have come down to the lifestyle factors, so just think about, okay, are you doing some strength training? Are you doing some 
uh, like me, just going for a, for a walk regularly? You're doing something like that every day. Are you uh, like just incidental walking around? Are you moving more? Are you getting um, like five, six highly nutrient balanced uh, meals into your daily eating? Are you doing those types of things? Is your sleep really quality uh, sleep? Um, you know, are you building your mindset each and every day so that you, um, you know, you help avoid uh, things like dementias, old Alzheimer's and that kind of stuff. All of those factors are super, super important. It doesn't matter where you are or what your fitness level is. We just look at how do we keep on, on improving? How do we adapt a program that is suitable for you? Uh, because most people tend to you drop their focus away as they get older, but we need to be increasing the amount of focus. So that would be my recommendation there. Um, right, this one on technology, I've a- answered that before. Um, so I'm not going to answer that one. It's like how has technology changed the way uh, you, no, well, look, I'll answer it quickly. How, how has technology changed the way you track and enhance your fitness regime? So I mentioned about my Apple Watch. I do like data and seeing uh, just what is going on uh, for me. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I do is I track my workouts, every set, every rep that I do. I track my food, uh, not each and every day. When I want to become more focused, I will track my food. So I, for me, it's about uh, just engaging me at another level, say, bang, yeah, I'm really switched on. I'm tracking everything. Uh, but most of the time I, I don't need to because I'm eating uh, what I need to uh, each and every day because I've been doing it for so long. Uh, so probably uh, in terms of uh, the app, I mean, it started out with me just tracking steps. And of course, they've added more and more uh, data in there that you can track. The latest one that I've done, which they added to the, the Apple Watch, uh, which is around mental health. And so it gives me a prompt, I think, twice a day around you know how are you feeling right now how have you feel, felt for the day and you can just click on different things quickly and then uh, you know what are the things contributing to that I mean I'm pretty much up here all all the time uh, so it's it's pretty simple uh, but that's interesting again it's like data you track it over time what does it look like what are the trends um, yeah so I mean I think uh, the the more enhancements that we have to technology, it's, it's only a help in terms of giving us more information about ourselves. Like I think that while I was talking about the sleep data, I mean, I think that's fascinating uh, to have that information and be able to just wear this for, you know, every now and then to say, okay, so what is my sleep, uh, my sleep patterns? Like if I remember I'll wear it tonight and I haven't done it for a while. Uh, I find that stuff in- interesting uh, and fascinating uh, just to, uh, give you some feedback about about where you are. So I mean, that's how that's how I use it. Last question: What is the biggest misconception about fitness you encounter, and how do you address it with your clients? Well, actually, probably the biggest one is like I just mentioned before. People think, okay, I I'm not where I want to be. I want to do something for a while to achieve those results, and then I'll be okay. <laughs> and so the biggest challenge that that I have with people is getting them to understand. How do you implement those those daily habits that you realize you need to do for the rest of your life? Uh, because if you go too hard, too extreme, it's going to burn out. Think about any diet that you may have been on. It's going to have failed at some point. So, oh, no, it worked here. Well, are you doing it now? No. Well, it's a failure uh, because uh, we want, only want to do things that are going to sustain us for the rest of our life in a healthy way. Uh, we enjoy, we love our food. It's easy to, uh, you know, easy to do. Um, at the, you know, we're doing the things that we really, really embrace. We really enjoy doing, like we, we enjoy the strength training. We enjoy uh, the cardio training we do. We're enjoying the mindfulness work that we're doing. We're enjoying building ourselves, growing ourselves each day. We're looking to, uh, do nothing more than grow in our life because you're either you're either staying the same or you're dying, right? So we we want to grow, and when you do that, you realize that well, I've got to be super focused on my health, and when I do that, then all of these things uh, align uh, together, and you find that uh, once you really have it as part of your lifestyle, you can't live any other way uh, because it just makes you feel so good, and it links to so many other aspects of success in your life and the way that you show up for you and other people and it's just you know life is just so so much more uh you know rewarding in in that way so that's probably the biggest one people think that i I just need to do something for a while no we need to do it forever 
All right. Thanks for all your questions this week, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you next time.